That's not too bad. It's a experiment of mine. I went on YouTube and looked at a whole bunch of videos on how to texture walls, the easiest ways to do it, different techniques to do it, all kinds of stuff. What I figured out is that a lot of people like to roll on the drywall putty and they're using either drywall putty or uh, the pre-mixed texture bags. Doesn't, didn't seem to matter to them. Depends on the video as to what they used, but I just used the last of my drywall putty and mixed in a bag of uh, pre-mixed texture and just rolled it on. I started out with a 3 8 nap roller. I did miss a few places. I started out with a 3 8 nap roller. Um, a lot of people on YouTube videos are saying at least a half inch nap. But I didn't have a half inch nap when I started and I figured I'd give it a test, you know, see how it looked. Um, I did eventually end up going to the store after I did the walls in the master bathroom. I went to the store in town and got a half inch nap roller, hooked it up, finished up doing the bathrooms. It didn't seem to make too much of a difference though. It didn't make the texture any thicker. Um, I wasn't going for a thick texture. I, well, I kind of was going for a thick texture. I wanted something that would cover up imperfections. But what I was noticing on these videos is they're using the rollers to roll on this drywall putty or the premix texture. And they're using it as a knockdown, knockdown method where you wait for it to dry halfway and then you take a big wide putty knife and you just lightly kind of graze the top and it knocks that texture down just a little bit. But in most cases, it made it kind of flat and I don't like the looks of flat texture. So I went with this. I'll see if I can get a decent look at it. Here's a flashlight. It's not a very thick texture. Some places are a little bit thicker than others, but it's just a roller. I didn't go back over it with a putty knife. My intention was not to go back over it with a putty knife because I didn't want the chance of digging into one particular place and having it not look good. And like I said, I don't like to look a flat texture. So this is what I've come up with for my place. Seems to work. I wish it was a little bit thicker, but I don't know how to make it thicker. I had to thin out the drywall putty in that, that premix texture bag. I had to thin that all out pretty good so that it wouldn't go on. I wouldn't be fighting it when I was rolling it on. When I first started putting it on, I was fighting it. it. It was so thick. It just wanted to stick in one place. It didn't want to roll out, you know? So I thinned it out a couple different times, worked with it, played around with it quite a bit. Um, by the time I got down to the ceiling in this laundry room down here, it was, uh, it was a pretty good consistency. It was maybe a little bit thinner than pancake batter. If you depending on how thick you want your pancakes, but it worked pretty good. The one thing I did have to do, any corners up, like from wall to ceiling, I did all the walls and then I went back and did the ceilings because the walls would basically be dry. And I had to do the corners with a brush and just take some, some uh, joint compound and stuff I was using, stick the brush in the, in the bucket, stick it up there in the corner and kind of dab it around to make it kind of have the same texture. It doesn't look perfect, but it's all textured and the corners aren't jacked up. So, um, yeah, we'll see. I'm going to put some primer on it tomorrow. I've got a fire not going anymore. Had a fire going almost all day. This place is nice and toasty warm. So all that should dry and I'm going to primer it tomorrow and show you how it looks. So hang out a minute. Uh, a 
Cat's running away. That cat did something. Yeah? What'd you do? What'd you do? You got a guilty look on your face. <laughs> I had that sitting up on edge. I bet you anything. I had it sitting up on edge, poking into the corner more. But when I went around to do silicone, I moved it out and it balanced up on the edge. I bet you anything she jumped up on it and it fell over. Well, it won't fall from there. I have never been good at picking colors. I will be the first to admit that. I'll see a color that looks good on a little piece of paper and I'll paint the whole wall with it because I think it looks great and it looks like dookie. So trying to imagine a whole room. I think these are going to be too dark. I think we need to go with something light. We're looking at a light green or a light blue. Um, to make something like this light blue. So I'm not a fan of white walls. I grew up with white walls. Every wall in our house was white. No other color than white. Um, I guess for the resale value, you didn't want to paint a color, paint a wall a color. And then if you have to sell the house, somebody doesn't like that color. So maybe they won't pay you as much as you want for the house. I don't know how that works, but my dad and mom, white walls, every house, no other color than white. I think we had one laundry room that was a, a light yellow, but uh, that was it. Everything was white. So most of my walls are gonna be painted a different color other than white. White is too hard to keep clean and too plain. However, picking a color, it's, it's, I'm probably gonna paint it the wrong color and have to repaint it just the way it is. I'm not good at picking colors. My wife, a little bit better than me, but She'll admit it, she's not really good at picking colors either. We usually paint things a couple different times. I think the darker ones are just too dark. And mainly what these colors are for is for the upstairs bathroom. These, this master bathroom that we're stand, st standing in right now is pretty big. The laundry room is pretty big, it's pretty open. But the upstairs bathroom is really closed off. Take you up there real quick. This is the upstairs bathroom. This part of the room is kind of small, but there's only gonna be a sink over here, probably some shelves right here. The toilet and the shower are in this room, which is even smaller. So we wanna paint it a color that's gonna make it look bigger, make it look more open. Neither one of these two rooms have a window, so there's no outside light coming in, especially the door shut. If the door's open, we have a little bit of light from those windows behind you. But this room, this is still pretty dark. So we wanna lighten it up. When I primered it, it's, it's like an off-white primer. It makes it look a little bit bigger. Before we put any primer or any texture down with those, the green board, it's kind of a dark green. Well, maybe even something like this. It didn't look as big. It didn't look as open, as inviting. So we definitely want to have a light color, a warm color, something that's going to make these rooms not look like the ceilings caving in on your head, kind of like it is. This 45 roof pitch right here definitely makes this room look small. If it had a flat ceiling and a box shape, the rooms would feel bigger. They wouldn't feel as small as they are. So that's the idea. Find a color that's inviting, warm, and light. Something that's gonna not feel so closed in. 
We're thinking about painting all three of these rooms the same color. That way we only have one bucket of paint. But what we might do is get, say, three one gallon jugs of different colored paints and obviously start off painting this room. If we don't like the first color, we'll put the second color on a different wall, see how it looks. We might even paint the walls a couple different colors just to throw, throw it off a little bit. The master bathroom, the laundry room, they're both bigger rooms, so it's not quite so important to find a color that makes it seem open and inviting. It is nice to have lighter colors and warm colors, just so you feel kind of at peace in your house. But these rooms could go different colors and not hurt so much. That upstairs bathroom is just so small and so closed in. We wanna make sure and pick the right color for those rooms. Doesn't look like I missed too many spots in here. So in the master bedroom, master bathroom. Yeah, it looks like I need to do some touch up in some of the corners up there. Not too bad though. I don't know how much it's gonna matter. But it's textured and primered. So we will get some paint, pick a couple colors, pick one color. I don't know yet. So until we get some paint, I think I'm gonna take a little break from the house and go work on this area right over here, right outside these big windows. It's kind of closed off over there. If you can see past our dirty windows, all those trees out there, I wanna thin those out a little bit, get a better view to see further out. I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'll grab a chainsaw, a nice rake, Clean that area up just a little bit, spend a little bit of time over there. It will be nice to be able to see a little bit further when we get moved in here. So I'm going to take a little break and do that. Until next time, guys, go make something.